Hey, Ben Norman here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how you can rank number one in Google in 2020 in five easy steps. Now, we're all aware of just how much traffic Google can send to a website, especially if you are sat in that coveted number one position. We know that about 70% or more of traffic that hit Google for a search term will go to the first three results. The majority of that 70% plus is going to the person in number one. So the importance of getting that number one ranking, I don't think we need to explain that to anybody, is immense. So if you wanna try and get that number one position, you need to make sure that your website is as relevant as possible for that term and that Google then sees that relevance and gives you that number one ranking as a result. But to get that number one ranking, you've got to be more relevant than the other people going for that search term. So without further ado, let's get onto the five steps you need to follow in order to get that number one ranking. Step number one, go niche. Far too often, what you find is that people try and go after these very, very short popular keywords that everybody is going after. And unless you have got a massive budget, your site's been around a long time, you are a major, major competitor for that search term, you're unlikely to get it. So what you need to do is be more realistic with your keyword selection. Go more long tail, which means that instead of going for a very short keyword, you're going for a search string. So more of instead of going for the term iPhone, let's say, we're going for, you know, uh, rose gold 128 gig iPhone. That is more of a longer term search phrase. The likelihood of being able to rank for that is a lot easier. So therefore, with the right keywords being selected and going for more long tail keywords, you stand a much better chance of getting that number one search term. Now, I know a lot of people would go, but yeah, but I want the small search term. You need to be realistic. You need to start with the longer tail and then you need to get more and more competitive with your search phrases. But you are much better off putting a lot of effort into getting that longer tail keyword that's still gonna get some really good relevant search traffic and actually be able to own that search term rather than chase a vanity key phrase that you've got no chance of actually getting. So step number two, dovetails nicely into step number one, and that's getting your keywords right. Just guessing at key phrases or thinking you know what search terms people come to your site on is not a correct strategy. Guessing is not a strategy and luck is not a strategy. We want to back up the selection of our keywords with data. And by doing that, there's various different methods that we can use. Now, one of my favorite tools for this has to be Answer the Public. It's a cracking website. You go along, you put in your C keyword. So if we carry on with the iPhone example, you'd pop iPhone in the search bar, hit go, and it will return back a load of different search queries that have been found based around that seed keyword. And this can help you start discovering keywords that you want to go after, um, keywords you want to build content around, whatever it might be. But if we stick on track with getting a website to rank, you would want it relevant to whatever that was. So you would look for the keywords around that and you would use that to base your searches off of. So Answer the Public is definitely a cracking resource and I would definitely check it out. All of these links will be in the description below for you just to make it easier. Once you've got your C keywords, you're able to go over to things like Google Suggest and YouTube Suggest, and pop those key seed keywords in, see what else comes up. Now you're able to link this with resources such as Keywords Anywhere, which will then come back with um, search data based on those keywords. So when you're searching in Google and YouTube, it will come back saying um, how many searches are typically done around that search phrase. So this can be really useful for when selecting a keyword, understanding just how much traffic you would expect to get. On top of this, you've also got tools such as Key, uh, Google's keyword tool um, used for paid search, but you're able to use it as well. Um, you can basically use that just to kind of get other ideas of um, search phrases and things like that. Now, 
when you're using these keyword tools with things like um, YouTube, there's also some really, really clever tools that you can plug into that, um, like vidIQ and TubeBuddy, and what they will basically do when you're putting search terms in, it will show you how much competition there is on YouTube. So what you'll also be able to see from this is just how many people are trying to get that keyword. Obviously, um, if you find keywords that have got a high um, search volume, so lots of pe people searching for them, but they've not got that many competitors, this can be a real opportunity for finding that kind of middle ground of a keyword that's slightly longer tail, got more search volume and less competitors. And you'd be much better off going after search terms like that rather than these shorter tail keywords that are gonna be a lot more competitive. Yes, it might on the face of it look like you're gonna get a lot more traffic, but to get to position one for it is gonna be near on impossible. So you're never actually gonna realize that. So you're much better off, like I said, going for the more long term using the previous tools and strategies to go through, select your longer tail keyword so we can lock that in and basically get the number one ranking for that. So before we get on to the next point, what is your strategy when it comes to defining your keywords that you go after for your website? I'd love to know, let me know in the comments below and let's get on to the next step. Step number three, on page. We need to get our content right, which means that the content that we're using on the page we're trying to get the ranking for, we're making sure we're using that keyword. We're making sure we're using relevant keywords, other keywords that Google would expect to see around this keyword. Now, if you want to hack this and understand quickly what keywords Google would expect to see around it, if you pop your seed keyword into Google and hit go, and look at the other search terms that it recommends. These are the kinds of phrases and keywords that Google expects to see around it. So if you can use that within your copy, then that's a bonus as well. Also, when it comes to on page, you don't wanna neglect the technical SEO of your site. This can massively hold it back. Like I've said before, we're talking site speed, mobile responsiveness, um, linking issues, you know, structure issues, all of this, you need your on-page right. And I'm gonna be releasing a further video on technical SEO, so if you wanna see that, make sure you hit the subscribe button, you'll be notified whenever I release new content to the channel. So make sure your content is on point, make sure that it is engaging the reader because you don't want people clicking back, you don't want your bounce rate going up because if you do secure that top ranking, if you've got a high bounce rate, Google is gonna see that and then it's gonna drop your ranking because it's gonna say, well, people don't stick around on your site, therefore it's not relevant to them, therefore we'll show them someone else. So you don't wanna let a low bounce rate hold you back, so you make sure your on-page technical SEO is sound and you make sure your content is on point and sticky so that it is able to kind of encourage people through, convert whatever the goal of that page is. So step four, now we've got our keywords locked in, we've got our on-page content sorted and our on-page technical SEO. We need to create on-point content relevant to that point that we can push out, that we can garner links from. Whether we're supplying content to people so that they link back to us, whether we're supplying content on our site that encourages people to link to us, whether we are doing um, surveys around that so that uh, media outlets use our survey data and then link back to us. We want to try and get people to link to us using those search terms. They need to be coming from relevant places. This is when we wanna be looking at things like content marketing to create really valuable content that people want to link to. If we can put that on the page that we're going for the ranking from, encourage people to link to it, that is all gonna help our link equity, which is gonna make Google see us being a lot more relevant and it's gonna push our rankings right up. So we really do not wanna neglect the kind of off-page signals, those link signals and citations. We want people talking about us, mentioning us and linking to the site, especially if they're using those search phrases or search phrases relevant to the phrase that we're trying to be ranked for. And finally, point five, we want to basically test, measure, and tweak. So 
By that, I mean we want to track our ranking. So I've already talked about uh, tool SEM Rush. You can track your rankings through that. Check it out in the links below. I also love AccuRanker. If you're tracking links for lots and lots of different things or lots of different sites, AccuRanker is cracking for that too. Um, you want to basically be tracking your results. You want to then be analyzing why you are where you are. Look at the people above you. Look at their links. Look at what they're getting, where they're getting links from, how many they've got, what are they doing differently. We then need to adapt our um, site. It might be that you need to kind of tweak the optimization of your page. More than likely, it is going to be that you need to just build more authoritative links from other sites to your page. So that's where the previous point, creating really good content and getting people to link to it with relevant link anchor text, that is what we want. Okay, so that's those five points. Basically, that's the process to go through, rinse and repeat, but basically when you get to the end, you're not done until you've got that number one ranking. You don't just move on, you don't just kind of go, oh, right, okay, that keyword didn't work, let's move on to another one. You know, if you've picked a far too competitive keyword, you might have to do that. If you've been realistic with your keyword selection, then it's probably that you just need to build some more links into the site, show its kind of authority, um, and keep pushing for it and you'll get that ranking. So I hope you found this video useful. If you're new here, consider subscribing for more business growth videos. If you've liked the video, make sure you drop it a like and I'll see you in the next video.